So we're aboard uh, Nordhaven 68, hull number 38. This is a forward wheelhouse version, uh, a brand new boat that uh, has just completed commissioning. And we're departing uh, Anacortes, Washington, on a delivery trip to Ketchikan. We're going to take the boat through the Canadian waters as a delivery, which is allowed by the uh, Canadian customs. And then the new owners will be waiting for the boat in Ketchikan. So we have uh, Doug Harlow, we've got uh, Parker Hadlock, myself, Jim Leishman, and then Don Coleman, who runs our Northwest office. So the total distance from uh, Anacortes to Ketchikan is about 600 nautical miles, and we're gonna try to make it in maybe a little over six days. Our route will take us from Anacortes to Sydney, at the south end of Vancouver Island, and then on to Galliano Island, where we'll spend our first night at Montague Harbor. From Montague, we'll enter the Straits of Georgia and proceed north up past Campbell River to Gallon Harbor, about 110 nautical miles. From Gallon, we'll proceed north, entering the Johnstone Strait and work our way to Blunden Harbor, about 103 nautical miles. From Blunden, we'll enter the Queen Charlotte Strait and then cross the Queen Charlotte Sound, entering the Fitzhugh Sound and work our way north to the settlement of Bella Bella, about 95 miles. From Bella Bella, we'll work our way northwest again through the Millbank Sound, entering the Finlayson Channel, the Ptolemy Channel, and work our way up through the Graham Reach to the abandoned cannery settlement of Buttedale. From Buttedale, we'll continue northwest and enter the long and narrow Grenville Channel which will continue on until we get up near Prince Rupert with a planned stop off of Cocktail Point, a place called Blossom Passage. From there, we'll continue our last 100 miles, passing Prince Rupert, entering U.S. waters, and completing our trip in Ketchikan, Alaska. At our first stop in Sydney, we'd clear Canadian customs. It was difficult in that COVID was in place and there were restrictions. We had to convince the customs that we were contractually obligated to deliver the boat. The owner wasn't aboard and uh, this was strictly for business. They did give us a clearance with instructions to not stop at any settlements, only stop to anchor and to get through the region as quickly as we possibly could. The owner of this 68, this is actually his second Nordhaven. And uh, this was a, a very uh, standard style uh, Nordhaven interior with the teak, the semi-gloss varnish. Owners selected their granites and stone and upholsteries and so forth, and generally uh, oversaw the interior layout. Propulsion on this Nordhaven is a 13.5 liter John Deere main engine with dry exhaust. It has a wing engine, a 4.5 liter John Deere. The main engine is about 425 horsepower and develops its horsepower at 1900 RPM. For this trip, we'll run about 1500 RPM, which gives us just under about 10 knots.
After clearing customs successfully, we made a short run up to Montague Harbor for our first night's anchorage. After a restful night at Montague Harbor, we backtracked a bit at a slack tide to make the passage through the Active Pass. We would then enter the Strait of Georgia and turn back to the north to continue our trip. continued on up the Straits of Georgia, uh, working our way to the north, northwest, and uh, past the, the town of uh, Campbell River, which is a fairly major town uh, in the central and northern part of Vancouver Island. And we spent our second night uh, at Gowland Harbor. Gallon Harbor is on uh, Quatra Island, which is a fairly big island uh, to the west of Vancouver. And uh, like so many other anchorages up in the Pacific Northwest or in the Inside Passage, it's a beautiful protected anchorage, uh, completely calm uh, at night, protected with a beautiful settlement surrounding the harbor. Another early morning departure from Gallen takes us out into the Discovery Passage and through the Seymour Narrows, which we were able to transit at slack tide. Continuing north uh, and west, we entered the Johnstone Straits.
continuing on, we entered the Queen Charlotte Strait and concluded our 103 nautical mile run at Blunden Bay. So just kind of, you can see right here, see if we're going this way. Yeah. You just go over there a little bit, right in the middle. Okay. Of plenty of room. All right. London was a beautiful, beautiful harbor. Again, 100% protected from all wind, current, absolutely calm, perfect anchorage, and pretty much represented our last stop before we left Vancouver Island behind and crossed over the unprotected waters of Queen Charlotte Sound. From Blunden Bay, we re-entered the Queen Charlotte Strait and worked our way up around Cape Caution and across the Queen Charlotte Sound, which is exposed to the Pacific and has a reputation for being sometimes rough. Uh, we continued on up and re-entered the protection of uh, Calvert Island and ran up the Fitzhugh Sound uh, and worked our way up to Bella Bella, which again was about 100 nautical miles for the day. We departed Bella Bella early. This was uh, in early April. So the weather was still pretty cool. And as we proceeded out, we started to get snow. We had snow consistently all the way through the, our passage of the Millbank Sound. We entered into the Finlayson Channel, working our way north, and wanted to go on the inside of Cone Island to take a look at the fishing town of Klemtu.
after passing Clem II, we proceeded north through the Tolmy Channel, decided to take a little side trip up the Green Inlet. Green Inlet is one of thousands of places we felt we passed that were just spectacular and you could spend days, a week there. Uh, the mountains were snow-capped, water was beautiful, uh, the area was protected, and uh, just spectacular scenery. Leaving Green Inlet and continuing north, we made our way to the Graham Reach. And this all is considered the Alaska Maritime Highway. So typically there's quite a bit of traffic with the ferries and so forth up through this route. We wanted to take a look at the abandoned cannery town called Buttedale, and we pulled in in hopes we could anchor, but the water was too deep and the anchor was just too tight to feel comfortable. So after taking a quick look at Buttedale, we departed, went around Work Island, and made our way up to a, a place called Scow Bay. Again, Scow Bay is an area that's worth days and days of exploration, but after a restful night, we had to move north. So we proceeded a bit south and made our turn, working our way up the Fraser Reach. A few miles on, we turned more to the west and entered the McKay Reach, then slightly to the north again across the Wright Sound and entered the long Grenville Channel. For the entire length of the Grenville Channel, there's spectacular Snow Peak Mountains, beautiful forests, and uh, spent the entire day or four or five hours uh, on that run, just 
awestruck by how beautiful the scenery is. Upon departing the Grenville Channel, we worked our way up through the Arthur Passage and around some islands and into a, uh, an area known as Cocktail Point, a very good anchorage just off of the northwest side of Lewis Island. And we spent a restful night there in preparation for our trip across the Dixon Entrance and on into uh, Ketchikan. So this is our uh, seventh day of running. We have just crossed back into the U.S. Uh, from Canada, and we're closing in. We're about three hours out, maybe a little less, from Ketchikan, and uh, that'll be the conclusion of, of this trip. It's been a fantastic trip, incredible scenery. Uh, this is early April, so it's, um, you know, the weather's been a little bit inclement. It's been cold. We've had snow. We've had some periods of sunshine that were fantastic. And uh, it's been a, a really terrific trip. Mm -hmm. 